Hey all, welcome to a new video. My name is Vivian from the Paper Letter Blog, also known as the Chatty Pen Pal channel. And today I have a really fun pen pal tutorial for you. So the first thing I'm showing you is the contents of the bubble wrap envelope. I am being funny and weird because <laughs> I've just painted my nails. I thought it was a good idea to paint my nails before I do, did a video. And then of course, um, I don't want to damage that best idea I ever had. But I'm first showing you the contents of the envelope because I will be using some dies in this video, these two in particular. Um, I received these dies from In Love Art Shop. Uh, it's basically a win-win because I received these goodies for free and I get to use them in a video and make a fun project with it and I have a discount code for you all so um, I will link that down below and I just want to say that even though I received these goodies for free all opinions are my own as always um, yeah you know uh, you can trust me in that and what I'm doing first is I'm just showing you what I will be using. So I have some pretty paper pads from a brand called Pebbles. The one I'll mainly be using is called Pebbles Tea Lightful. You may remember that from my um, my tea party collaboration with Brittany McCowan I did all of these years ago. It's a quite an old paper pad, one of the first ones I ever bought. I've had it forever, um, but I, I recently did a challenge on my Patreon to try and use as much of my pretty supplies as I have. So, you know, this is one of the pretty paper pads that I have been hoarding and keeping. The first thing I did is obviously cut out all of these banners or flags or however you want to call them because you may have guessed it from the title. I'm actually going to make a Happy Meal bunting, which is basically just Happy Meal, but then you can also hang it up after. I thought that was kind of cool. Um, so what I did is I cut out these um, scalloped flags and then I also, for three of them, I also cut out the inner paper so that you have a kind of a layered effect. Then what I did just now is I had, I cut out um, a, I cut out a shaker from foam or poster board, which is basically just foam board, like it's thick cardstock like stuff. And I had some scraps left of that because of course I used the die to cut out the flag shape. And I realized that I could actually re use that scrap to turn one of the flags into a pocket. So it looks a little bit weird, but what I've basically done is I have created some space behind the inner flag you see here. And then all I do is I just glue that onto the paper with an extra border at the top. I just have a paper punch that creates a pretty border. It's kind of difficult to explain, but it's basically just you know imagine like a piece of paper behind the pocket so that it stands up a little bit and you can actually tuck more goodies behind that so the next thing i'm going to do that is the flag i had cut out and uh, the next thing i'm going to do is i wanted or i was hoping to make a shaker so there's that poster board again it's kind of like a puffy a puffy something i really don't know how to explain it it's like foam, you know, like you have double-sided tape. It's kind of the same idea, but then it doesn't stick. <laughs> Best idea ever. And what I wanted to do with this one and the reason why I cut it out is make a shaker, as I said before, but the poster board I had left was too small to cut out the whole flag. So I decided to make the shaker a tiny bit smaller. Uh, also because I thought that if I made the whole shaker, like the whole flag, it might be a little bit big. I just improvised. I'm sorry, the whole beginning of this video is a bit vague, but you know, whenever I do these videos, I want you guys to look at them for inspiration, hopefully take some ideas and of course feel free to follow along. But the main thing I want is for you to get crafty and to just start um, making something and I don't want it to be a set of rules that you have to follow. So to cover up the top of the shaker that I made, I actually use one of those um, paper strips that is at the top of the paper pad. And I just cut that with my scissors so that you get kind of a ruffle effect, you know, like fringe. I think it's called a fringe at least. Um, so that's a little bit more, more playful. And then I'm just going to cover it up a little bit with some of the elements I have. I don't actually have any of the die cuts 
like the actual die cuts um, but what I do have is a digital set of die cuts so I purchased that all these years ago and then you can just print them out and cut them as often as you like so that's what I did I cut them all by hand and then I do of course have the paper pad so I just cut some things like tickets and stuff from that as well so this is kind of basic, right? I just glue the, the shaker we made onto one of the scalloped legs. And that's that. I have to admit, um, because the paper is quite busy already, like all of the paper has a lot of print on it, I did not want to overdo it and decorate too much. It is like my pen pal, it, this went to my pen pal Emilia, I don't think I've said that yet, but she could hang it up if she likes and I hope that it will blend in effortlessly with any craft supplies uh, she has on display. Because I know she has her crafty space in her bedroom, so I didn't want to overdo it I guess and I don't think that for this in particular it needs too much like I definitely decorate the flags and the bunting or whatever else you call it but I also think it looks fun kind of minimalistic I suppose I'm not I'm not good at doing minimalistic so I'm just trying to <laughs> justify this I always feel that whenever I do minimalistic I need to do more or something it needs something else so I will talk you through what I'm doing. Obviously, this is me trying to... I Obviously, I punch holes into the banners, but what I was trying to do is to get them at the same height, which is impossible. I should have marked it with a pencil or something. I don't know. I'm not very good at that. But I just wanted to be them... I wanted them to be somewhat at the same size. And then what I did is that paper block I have from the dollar store also has these glittery papers in it and I cut all of these eyelets or hole reinforcers um, from the glittery cardstock and I'm just gonna glue them on there and I have all sorts of different ones it's just basically something to make sure that you don't rip the holes even though I don't think that's really possible but you know it just looks cute I suppose I also have like you saw me use just now a crocodile which is an eyelet setter but I thought if I would use these metallic eyelets on every flag, it might get a little bit bulky. And I also quite like the way this looks. So it's just paper shapes around the holes. This is my favorite color combination. I quite like the green one. I like all of them, but the green one definitely is most my style. And then this is me decorating the rest of them. Um, this is a word punch. You may remember that I am a, um, a brand representative for Craftbird, which is a Dutch web shop where you can purchase all sorts of craft supplies. <laughs> it's all in the name. Um, and they were kind enough to send me the word punch and I've been having so much fun. So I just punched Emilia, which is my pen pal's name, for um, a piece of paper and I'm going to use that as... Um, on the front or I don't know it's not really the front because like I said it's a banner so technically speaking you would hang all of them up next to each other but when I wrap it up I of course put one of them in the front and that is going to be that one so I just wrote hello on all of these paper strips I love repurposing the paper strips that come at the top of the paper pads especially since I found out that they actually fit perfectly into the uh, the word punch so I just punched hello on different colored papers until I found one that I thought would look nice uh, on the front paper and then I could of course gift those hellos that I punched as extras as gifts <laughs> as well I'm just backing this hello and the Emilia with um, some lighter cardstock so that it stands out a little bit more I like the way that looks you don't have to do that, but because the background paper is quite... Yeah, that's just me showing you that you can now read the hello a little bit better. But because the background paper is also really busy, I like doing this because otherwise it just gets a little bit lost in the background. So while we're doing that, let me talk to you guys a little bit because... Oh, I have to start again. 
Um, anyway, last Sunday I actually uploaded a craftelier haul video. It's just me showing you all of the craft supplies I got because, as you may or may not know, I am back at work now after six months of being in lockdown, after six months of being at home. And I always like to celebrate these kind of big events in my life with... I guess you would call it a gift for myself. So I just picked all sorts of pretty things from craft, like craft, cro what is it called? Scrapbooking papers to a paper trimmer. And I don't know, picked a lot of things. I think you would really like it. So I uploaded that video last Sunday. You can check it out if you want. Um, but because I of course talked a lot about the goodies I got, I wasn't able to really talk about how I've been. Some of you are here for the mail and for the tutorial, or it's not a tutorial, but for the process video. And that is totally okay. But I am very grateful to say that some of you are also really interested or I don't know, like supportive because um, I went back at work two weeks ago and I've gotten so many messages from people saying they think about me or they hope everything is okay because of course going back to work after six months of lockdown is a lot for everyone. But for me, especially with my anxiety, it was just kind of a daunting thing, you know, like sleepless nights kind of thing. Um, so I also wanted to update you or those of you that care about that a little bit while in the background I'm actually making a little mini paper pad. I showed you how to do that in the pen pal goodies made from paper scraps video. Um, I actually decided to change it up a little bit and add some stamped images to the pages as well. So if you want to know how to do this, yeah, you can quickly look at it what I'm doing now. <laughs> Um, but you can also check out the pen pal do-it-yourself pen pal goodies made from paper scraps videos. It's linked down below. Um, but anywho, just a quick update. I've been back at work for two weeks now. It has been absolute crazy. I wish I could say that things are back to normal, but of course they're not. Especially because when I'm doing this voiceover, um, we don't know yet. Every time I tell one of these stories, there's something I don't know. And this time, the thing we don't know is whether or not we will, as restaurants, will be allowed to open from like morning until eight at night. Because currently we're only allowed to open from 12 to six, which is nice. And it's actually quite good for me because, you know, can you imagine if I had to go back to work like full, full time right away? And now it's kind of like a, half a day and then the other half of the day is just cleaning and organizing and stuff like that um so it's been good for me but we're just currently waiting on news um to see whether or not we will be able to open for longer hours again um but okay like <laughs> apart from the the not knowing of that it has actually been really, really good. Of course, my anxiety is there and whenever I have to go to work in the morning, I have that feeling in my stomach that's not really like it. You could describe it as butterflies, but way less pleasant. <laughs> so it's like you can't eat, you can't sleep and you just you're just pacing around the house. So, of course, there has been a lot of that and I'm not complaining about that. That's just the way it is. You know, I've always known that with my anxiety, going back to work would result in stomach aches and sleepless nights. And, you know, it's just a part of who I am now. Um, but I'm happy to say that it wasn't as bad as I expected. Like a part of my anxiety was related to being afraid of how bad my anxiety was going to be. So can you imagine, I create the anxiety I am so afraid of by being so afraid of it. It's an endless circle and um, it's so pointless, but yeah, that's just anxiety for you. Um, so I was really afraid of being exhausted and like crying and panicking and panic attacks and stuff like that. And that didn't really happen. I mean, the exhaustion, sure. Almost falling asleep in the bathtub, definitely having no energy slash inspiration slash peace of mind for crafting also but nothing extreme nothing out of the ordinary and that's just kind of good news i guess so a lot of you messaged me saying i hope everything is okay and i i can proudly say yeah 
everything is okay. I mean, apart from being nervous, um, it's actually really, really well. <laughs> And I also want to say that being back at work has been really, really fun. It definitely made me realize that waitressing is what I love doing. For many people, it may be like a side job during college or something like that. But for me, it's definitely what I enjoy doing most. And I missed work and my co-workers so much. <laughs> and that is definitely a good part of being back as well. I get to have the banter and, you know, the, the excitement and all of that. So about the meal, in the background I made these little ticket embellishments uh, with various supplies. Most of the die cuts are either hand cut or um, I cut with die cuts because... Uh, yeah. Because. <laughs> and then I'm just decorating them some more with some Nouveau drops. That's my head. I'm just trying to focus a lot. Um, so I use a lot of Nouveau drops. I will also link those down below. I always use affiliate links for this, so um, which means that I get a small commission, but for some reason I've been kicked from my Amazon account, so the links still work, but I get nothing. I mean, not that I would normally get a lot, you, you, you have to imagine that I got like, let's say uh, $6 a month from Amazon, but it's still kind of rude, like why did they ban me from my account? They're not saying, I think I didn't make enough or something, but... The link should still work, so I will link everything down below if I can. I mean, the tea light full stuff is too old to link, but yep, I hope that helps. And then we have the paper pad, which I let dry, and I just made a small banner or a tuck spot from another one of those paper strips to kind of hang, is it called hang? I don't know, to, to place the um, paper pad on the page. <laughs> Good, good story, Vivian. And what I'm doing here is I have I made these washi type samples from different Maggie Harms washi types because I know my pen pal likes these, and I just put them together with some twine. And then I had another tag, but it was too big, so I just put it with the paper pad instead. And now I'm going to add more goodies. I have these circle stickers, which I personally love using, so I figured my pen pal might like them as well. And I'm just going to pop them in that pocket as well. I say as well too often. I'm just going to also put them in that pocket together with some more die cuts. Um, I do want to say one thing. Amelia and I, we have been pen pals for quite a long time. Quite a few years, I think. And um, because I'm not like shopping anymore, I stopped shopping on AliExpress. I sometimes struggle with what to send to these pen pals. Uh, very often the mail I make is like a one or a two time thing because I reply to a lot of PO box mails. But for my pen pals, I want to send them something new every time. And I sometimes struggle with that, which is also why I did that do it yourself pen pal goodies uh, video so that I could have a bigger array of goodies to send and that is why in this case I also made the little paper pad and sent my pen pal a bunch of different cutouts or um, not cutouts but die cuts because of course I have these die cuts and she doesn't have them so then it's somewhat original but as far as stickers and everything go I'm always afraid that I've already sent it once or you know, they've already seen everything and they're like, Vivian, <laughs> you're boring, <laughs> you're basic. Um, so that's why I try to, especially in these videos, make a lot more original goodies. Because with the PO book supplies, very often it doesn't matter um, what I send because it will be my first time sending to someone and it's not like a repeat gift. Like I haven't sent them the washi tape samples or I haven't sent them the stickers yet. And that's, uh, I worry about that a lot less. Although of course I still would like to be original. So this is just some more of the goodies that I, um, ended up putting in the envelope. I don't know if I told you guys this yet, but I made these little mini cards. I definitely shared that on Instagram. You can follow me there if you haven't already. I made these basically business cards, but without information. It's just uh, the little logo that Arumi from Picure Mix uh, Australia webshop Etsy store uh, designed for me. And I want my idea is to pop them in all of the PO Box replies. And of course, I'm also going to send them to my pen pals at least once because I think they're so adorable. So they are original. They have my logo on it and everything. And uh, I just write a little message on the back. 
then what I'm making here is I have that tag that I also printed and then I also cut a project life card to the same size and I'm going to turn this into a male tag. Whenever I do one of these I get questions about it very often. A male tag basically is a list of questions you send to your pen pal, your pen pal replies and sends you a new list of questions. So it's like tag you're it. You send questions, you tag, and then your friend pal sends questions back and you get tagged. So I just, this time I wrote things like, what is the best advice you've ever gotten and stuff like that. Sometimes I, I probably also repeat questions because we've been pen pals for so long and I, there's like a certain type of question that I love asking, but what is the best advice you've ever gotten is definitely one of my new favorite questions. So let me know as well in a comment down below, what is the best advice you've ever gotten. I'll share one I recently read it in a book. I have already shared it here on in, or on YouTube, but you know, I'm going to share it again because good advice. We all need that sometimes. Um, the advice basically was that we are not defined by the fear we feel or in other words anxiety my anxiety let's just keep it with me my anxiety doesn't say anything about my capability to handle the situation so just because i felt so much anxiety for going back to work that doesn't mean that i won't be able to do well Mm -hmm. I thought that was a pretty good one. Anyway, you might be confused because you just saw an envelope flash across the screen. I actually made that envelope in a TikTok video or for a TikTok video, I should say, because I'm going to upload it after I finish editing this video. Um, so if you want to see how I made that envelope and of course how I um, make many, many more envelopes and wax seals and pen pal letters follow me on tiktok because i've actually figured out that i quite like making these short little videos um it will all be pen pal related so if that's uh, obviously that's something you're interested in because you're already here um so check that out if you like and this is just me going quickly through the mail again um this is the envelope i am going to show you in a tiktok video for my pen pal media this is my letter that I just popped in there and I'm showing you that yes I made the envelope upside down because I am a special person with special envelope upside down making talents. This is of course the bunting, it now looks like a tag flip but you know I hope that my pen pal realizes that she can hang this up. I, I, uh, I at least added plenty of thread so that she can. Then we have the mail tag which is um, I've just popped in the envelope separately with my questions and my answers and then we have my little paper letter blog card i had to redo that because it wasn't focusing and i wanted it to look perfect and i decided not to cut out the first try then very exciting i of course made that little gift bag you see the gift bag creeping in on the side um and i also made another gift bag with paper sequins. I die cut a whole bunch of paper sequins and I also die cut some more of the um, eyelids. I didn't show the um, gift bag anymore but you already saw me fill it. It's just filled with bunches, st bunches of stickers and more die cuts that I made from those. Uh, yeah and also the words hello that I made and this is me awkwardly trying to show you that it is a banner. You can see that it is a banner and I'm doing an awkward dance. Very awkward dance, but of course because the light is so bright it doesn't actually show the banner. But you get the idea. You get the idea. Just the only thing is the paper pad kind of slid down. It's supposed to hang a little bit higher. <laughs> Yeah, Vivian, we get it. Okay, <laughs> thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If it gave you some ideas, and of course, if you're going to make a pen pal, snail mail, happy mail banner of your own, uh, definitely tag me on Instagram with the hashtag the paper letter blog. A big thank you to all of my patrons shown here on screen. You guys are all amazing and you make sure that I can continue making these videos and spending time on all of this and upgrading my current setup. Um, link to Patreon is also down below. And I will talk to you again very, very soon. Um, hope you're all doing amazing. Bye. <laughs>